Just lift hallelujah in this room. Hallelujah. hallelujah in this room. Hallelujah in this room. Come on, let's give God praise wherever you are. Knowing that God truly rescued our lives. And that's why we give him praise and we give him glory. Because we recognize truly we would not be where we are today if it was not for the Lord. And, and I said I was going to say this later, but it's so amazing because I didn't look at the song list for this month to see what was going on. But God has a way of even tying messages with the song. And I just thank God so much for the obedience of the spirit in the house. Come on, let's give God praise for that. And so many times we wrestle with what God is saying. And God, are you, surely, do you, are you sure you want me to repeat this? And, and But God has a way of moving us forward in life. And that's what we have to trust. And in this season and today, we're just excited about the blessings of God, the anointing of God that is placed on each of our lives. And we come to a very, very, very important time in worship and this the communion. When we think about what Jesus did for us on the cross, that when we come to this time of fellowship and participating in the meal, we understand that this is only a symbol of who Jesus is. It is not that the bread turns into his body or the wine turns into his blood. It is a symbol. And he says, as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me, which means that it's not just first Sunday, we can do it any time of the month, any day of the week. But we come and fellowship, talking about the goodness of God, the goodness of his son dying for our sins. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 26, verses 26 through 30, it says, and as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you 
in my father's kingdom. And they went, and when they had sung songs, sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And that's what we must be mindful of today, that this is not a time of mourning, this is a time of thanksgiving. Thanking God for all that he did for us. And so wherever you are, I ask that you would just bow your head. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this moment in time when we can come and worship you. And we thank you, God, for this time of communion, this time of fellowship. And Father, we pray now that you would bless this bread that symbolizes your body. God, bless this wine that symbolizes your blood for the remission of all sin. And God, we as men and women of God, we recognize that we're not perfect. And there are some things, God, we have fallen in. And God, we ask that you will forgive us on this day. That as we search our own hearts and our own minds, that as we stand before you today, we will stand as people who have confessed. And we confess, God, that we are a believer. We trust that you are truly God. And God, we confess today that we are forgiven. Because you said, Lord, that if we confess our sins, that you are faithful and just to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And therefore, God, today we stand for you as cleansed men and women of God, as cleansed sons and daughters. So, Lord, have your way in this service. And thank you for this season and this time. It is in Jesus' powerful name we pray. Let every heart say amen, amen, and amen. Come on, give God praise going to ask you to do pass the peace too right now and let me just hug your neighbor on your left and right and you may be seated in the name of the lord as the deacons and elders come to serve you at this time amen
palace for me. It's love's like a hurricane. I am a tree bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy. And all of a sudden, I am unaware of these afflictions eclipsed by glory. And I realize just how beautiful you are and how great your affections are for me. And oh, Because he loves us. The bread again symbolizes his body, which was broken and hung for us on Calvary's cross. Stayed in a tomb for three days, but rose again with all power in his hands. Let us take a knee together. The wine represents his blood for the remission of all sin. There's nothing you've done in your past. There's nothing you could have done in your present, and there's nothing you can do in your future that the blood cannot wash you from. Let us take and drink together. Amen. Come on, let's give God praise for just a wonderful Savior. If you are here visiting for the first time, just wave your hand wherever you are. If you're a first-time visitor, just wave your hand wherever you are. Excuse me. Amen. I see a couple of hands. Welcome to New Mercies. We're so glad to have you here. And what we call this time is past the peace. And because it is 2020, we ask that you get 20 good hugs. Amen. Get to know the people around you. Introduce yourself to the individuals you're hugging. God bless you. Pass the peace. Problems on the outside 
to be consumed with the Holy Ghost fire. Open up your mouth and take the name of Jesus higher. Say,
the best you can give him? Godfrey, is that the best you can give him? Look at your neighbor say, raise up. Send the praise up. And after you praise him, you know what you got to do? Look at somebody and say, stand. After you praise him, you got to stand for something. Look at somebody and say, after you praise him, you got to take a stand. Oh, come on and clap those hands and bless the name of Jesus.
after you've done all you can. You done all you can. You've been wounded, you've been scarred. After you've done all you can. Sometimes you cry all through the night. But God said, Come unto me, all ye that labor. For I will, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will give you rest. You prayed, you cried, you prayed, and you cried. You prayed, you cried, you prayed, and you cried. You prayed, you cried, you prayed, and you cried. God read your tears. Heard your cry. Yeah. 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 Stand. That's all you gotta do is stand. After you've done all you can, you just stand. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God praise because that's what it's all about. Standing and trusting God. Um, this year I had the privilege of going to St. Jude and for the celebration and later where I have a representative to come forward. But Donnie McClurkin was there and he sung this particular song, but before he sung it, he, he gave his testimony about how that song came to be and he was talking about how he was on an airplane and how he was sitting in the back and he was tired because this was at the beginning of his career taking off and he was like Lord I just don't understand you know this is what I prayed for but I'm tired and you know you can get blessed by God and then be overwhelmed by the blessings and he was just overwhelmed and at the moment that he really felt like that he didn't understand and didn't know what God was doing and he was going from one city to another and though he was wore out he said the Lord just told him stand and sometime when we're just wore out and sometimes it's not a bad wear out because you just wore out from good things but it doesn't mean you're not tired it doesn't mean that you may not feel like giving up you you still got to trust God in those seasons that he'll be able to keep you. And all you can do is just stand. Amen. Come on, give God praise for that. So I thought that was a wonderful testimony from him because it wasn't just in very difficult times. It was because of a blessed time that times became difficult. And sometimes that happens. That There is a word I want to share with you and I, I preached this text about two years ago but I'm starting a new series and I didn't want to start it with a lot of guests and I know we're going to have a lot of guests at second service and I'm going to start it next week tell your neighbor next week and I just asked God for a word to share today and between this week and everything and just praying this this came to mind I want you to turn with me to Deuteronomy chapter 1 Deuteronomy chapter 1 and I'm going to read verse 1, then I'm going to jump down to verse 6. When you have it, say amen. For the sake of time, I, I just want to skip some verses, but I promise I'll bring you up to par. In verse 1, it says, These are the words of Moses. The words which Moses spoke to all Israel on this side. Tell your neighbor this side. This side of the Jordan in the wilderness. In the plain opposite of Suf, between Paran, between Tophel, Laban, Hazareth, and Dishab. 
This I have. Now look at verse 6. The Lord our God spoke to us in Herod, saying, You have dwelt long enough at this mountain. Turn and take your journey and go to the mountains of the Amorites and to all the neighboring places in the plain in the mountains and in the lowland, in the south, on the sea coast, to the land of the Canaanites and to Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates. See, I have set the land before you. Go in and possess the land. The Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give them to them and their descendants after them. Verse 9, and I spoke to you at that time, saying, I alone am not able to bear you. The Lord your God has multiplied you. And here you are today as the stars of heaven and multitude verse 11 may the lord god of your fathers make you a thousand times more numerous than you are and bless you as he has promised verse 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 six and seven is where we will be concentrating the lord our god spoke to us in herb saying you have dwelt long enough at this mountain turn and take your journey. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, God said it is time. Amen. Amen. Come on, give God praise as you take your seat. God said it is time. When, when studying this all over, I thought about Again, that this ought to be a season of celebration. That when God says it's time, we ought to celebrate because God is saying, don't stay here. It's time to move on. He, he desires to take you from one place to another place. He takes you out of Egypt to take you into Canaan. But sometimes we get stuck in the wilderness while we're on our way to Canaan. The challenge with the wilderness is that God's people are walking in circles, that they're wandering. And that's not what the Lord wants for us. He does not want us walking in circles, but he wants us moving forward. Tell your neighbor forward. The more I study and pray, I'm convinced that God wants the best for us each week. That as I look into the word of God and see us coming into relationship with Jesus Christ and developing our relationship, I believe that God wants the best of us. And we are the ones that sometimes get in the way of the blessings of God for our lives. And what we need to understand is that we need to get out the way. Yeah, tell your neighbor, get out the way. Because some of us, watch this now, never reach the place God has for us because we're always walking in circles of fear and not believing that things can be better. God, God is saying to some of us or someone in here that, that it's time to move on, move past your right now and Grab hold of what's in front of you, and it's time to move. And, and that's what I love about this text because it says that, watch this, though it looks like you're stuck, you're not stuck. Now the children of Israel, watch this now, they, when we look at this, we understand that God has them in, in, in a holding pattern. He, he has them at a place, watch this now, where he wanted to show them something because the generation before them messed up. 
the generation before them caused them to go into this holding pattern because the generation before them was afraid to trust God. They were afraid to trust God for something better. They, they were more afraid of man than they were of God. They, they trusted the strength of man more than they trusted the strength of God. They, we recognize something here because God was ready to bless them with the land over 40, 40 years ago. Watch this. But the challenge is that we find that they were afraid to move. Tell your neighbor they were afraid to move. The reason they were afraid to move, you can read chapter 13 of Numbers, but verses 32 and 33 says this. Ten of them gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land which they had spied out. The land through which we have gone as spies and is a land that devours its inhabitants, which means it's a big land. And all the people we saw in it are men of great stature. They, there we saw the giant, the descendants of Anak came from the giants, and we were like grasshoppers in our own sight, and so we were in their sight. Can, can, can I say something here? Because when you read the text, you'll discover that he sent 12, that they chose as leaders of their tribes. And when they went over there, the Bible says they came back with grapes, pomegranates, figs, and they hung out for 40 days. For 40 days, nobody bothered them. For 40 days, they hung around and walked amongst what those they considered to be giants. For 40 days, they, they ate from the, true, from, from the fruit. They, they were there. The Bible says they, they, they brought back something that two men had to carry on sticks because the grapes were so heavy. Evident that, watch this now, that what God said about the land was true, but the challenge is what they saw in spite of the blessings. Preach, Kearney. And what they saw were men who were taller than them and bigger than them, but it doesn't mean they were better than them. And sometimes, watch this now, we minimize ourselves and it keeps us from doing what God has called us to do. In other words, what we see here, you would never move into some greater thing, the greater things of God, when you are negative and thinking small. Preach, Kearney. Because some of us got to recognize God is not calling us to be small and to have small thinking. You got to understand that God will always call you to something that is bigger than yourself so that you will trust in God and put your faith in God. Am I talking to somebody? In other words, you got to stop stressing about how big it is and how large it is and the challenges that you got to face in order to obtain the promise. You got to trust in God like you never trusted in God before because if God said you can have it and if God said he'll give it to you and if God said he'll do it, you got to trust him. Tell somebody you got to trust him. So historically what we see here in the text, we see them at the Mount of Kadesh. Thank you. Thank you, elders. We, we, we see them at Kadesh Barnea. Now watch this now. And they have been there. They're, they're there in their 40th year after they have been delivered from Israel, from Egypt. They, 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 they were supposed to come out of Egypt and go directly into the promised land. But the challenge is somebody messed up. Two, watch this. Two said, let's go. Ten said, no, it's too big. The ten convinced the others, millions, to stay. Can I say something up in here? You gotta, you, this is not the season to be around negative folks. This is not the season to sit around and let somebody tell you what God is not able to do. Now, I know the coronavirus is going on and we're praying for people. And we are believing God for healing. But don't you get so caught up in the virus that you don't remember the healer. Afraid to go anywhere and afraid to do anything. And you got to recognize you can't walk in fear and you can't live in fear. You you got to live by faith. That's what the word says. The just shall live by faith. 
And so now God allowed the, the older generation to die off. And now those who were 20 years old, watch this now, from the time 40 years ago, they're, they're older now. New babies have been given birth to. And so God kept them around the mountain so that he could teach them the word of God and teach them how to worship him. And, and Moses would teach them and get them to understand and expound on them, expound to them. that listen now, when you get to your promise, you're going to understand that you got to conquer the enemy. You got to inherit the promise. You, you watch this now and live successfully in the new home that God has called you to live in. You got to recognize that you're in the wilderness now. And I'm teaching you in the wilderness how to handle the promise. Because the promise is a whole lot different than the wilderness. The wilderness is a desolate place, a deserted area, devoid of civilization. One of Hebrew washes and one, one Hebrew word above all others is used for wilderness. Is, is understand the word desert. It's the word midbar. The word midbar indicating both that which is des desolate and desert, a deserted. In other words, that if nobody would be here if you weren't here. There will be no productivity and there is none. That's why God has to rain down manna from heaven and has to also bring water from a rock because this is a deserted place. But when you get to the place that is overflowing, don't forget it was God who kept you in your wilderness place so that you will understand how to worship. Well, I'm going to feel like preaching now. You'll know how to worship when you get there. That's why Psalms 107, 4 through 5 says it this way. They wander in the wilderness in a desolate way. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty. Their soul fainted in them, which means they were about to give up. But yet God has a promise for them. Tell your neighbor God has a promise for you. Which means what the Lord said here. He says, listen now, it is time, my brothers and sisters, that you move forward. I know some of you have been, many of you are tired of walking around and seeing the same thing day after day, knowing it could be better. Looking at the same spiritual problem, same personal problem, same marital problem, same, watch this, self-esteem problem. The same problem with your children, same problems. You're tired of walking around looking at the same mediocre life when your promise, watch this now, is just down the road. See, I, and, and what God wants us to understand, there's no sense in getting your, pro, your promise and not enjoying it. Come, come on. You don't leave your problem going to your promise not to enjoy your promise. So what God shows here, watch this now, when you get to your promise, you need to enjoy it. You need to be living the full life that God has called you to live through Jesus Christ. That's why Jesus said that I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So we see something very clear. And even in Jeremiah 30 and 19, it says, Then out of them shall proceed, proceed thanksgiving and the voice of those who make merry. I will multiply them and they shall not diminish. I will also glorify them and they shall not be small. Preach, Kearney, again. Because what many of us need to understand, listen now, although things may not be perfect in your life, when you get in your promise, you still ought to be giving God praise because you know where you come from. And some of us, I got to say this up in New Mercies, don't please, please don't be those people that when God blesses you with something, that you act like it's been this way all the time. It ain't always been this way. Some of us came from Bankhead, and some of us came from Southeast Atlanta, and some of us came from the Bronx, and some of us came from Brooklyn, and some of us came from Detroit, and some of us came from the ghettos downtown, but yet by the grace of God, you are where you are today. God said they shall not be small. You cannot hang with small thinkers right now. Small thinkers will keep you in the wilderness. So God is teaching the people to think bigger and to trust him and to obey his word. And what I love about the Lord is that we see him giving them another chance. 
And I love always saying that or when I get a chance to say it in a text is that God is giving them another chance. And I love saying another chance because all of us blew our second chance. <laughs> I love that because some of us act like we're on our second time around. No, you're not. Truth of the matter, you like your pastor. I can't even count how many chances God has given me. So God wants the best for us. And here's point number one. God said, says it's time to move on. Tell your neighbor it's time to move on. But what will we see here? Watch this now. In verse six, the Lord our God spoke to us at Horeb, Horeb, excuse me, saying, you have dwelt long enough at this mountain. T tell your neighbor this mountain. Now, your mountain may be different than my mountain right now. But according to the ESV, it says, you have stayed long enough at this mountain and the challenge is they they were at that mountain watch this now with a purpose mm. they were in a place where they had been going in circles but they still had a purpose so we need to recognize although I don't understand everything right now it does not diminish the fact that I have a purpose in my life. And someone need to understand that, watch this now, that every point in your life, you still have been filled with purpose. That they were at Mount Sinai, and while they were camped there, watch this, the tabernacle was constructed. While the tabernacle was constructed, the priest and the Levite were set aside. And while the Levites and the priests were set aside, set aside and set apart for the service of God, watch this now, they were taught the word of God. Tell your neighbor the word of God. And when they received the word of God, God taught them how to worship him and how to sacrifice to him, how, how to love him. They, God taught them that, watch this now, while they were in the wilderness at the mountain and watch this, and while they would go to the tabernacle or when they would go to the tabernacle for worship. This is what I see here. See, sometimes we got to recognize that some people are still on this side. Preach, Kearney, because this ain't in my notes right now. Because what do you mean by that? Because some folks are still learning how to worship God right now and some people are still getting enough word in them so that when they get to the promise of God in their life that they'll know how to worship God can I say this up in here do not allow people to rush you from the mountain you don't move from the mountain until God says it's time for you to move from the mountain because the mountain is the place where you're supposed to learn something not saying that you don't have purpose you're still circling because you don't know Ooh. why should I learn how to worship the Lord in the wilderness because there's no sense in taking you to the promise without you having what you need to watch this to help you stand in the promise See, see, God keeps you here or kept them there long enough so that they would know him. Tell your neighbor, know him. Because here's it. He brought them out of Egypt. And watch it. Though they knew, knew of the Lord, they didn't know the Lord. Y'all missed that. Because we got a lot of folks that know of God, but they really don't know God. And sometimes God got to keep you in a place so that you can learn some life lessons and learn about him. Because see, this is what I love about the text is that when you read the history of the children of Israel, you got to recognize in the wilderness God did it for you. Tell your neighbor God did it for you. 
That's what I love because in the wilderness there was no there was nothing to grow bread, so God sent bread. There was no water running, so God said to speak to the rock and water came. Strike the rock and water comes. Now we see something here. This is what God does for you. But when you get to the promised land, understand everything will be there when you can do something for yourself but don't you think you did it all by yourself you will know that god did it for you so you can do it for yourself can i preach that for a minute here because some of us think we did it all by ourselves no 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 when you get in there you'll know how to stand because understand something the season will come even in the promise where it will be tough. See, God keeps us there as long, as long, as long as he does so that we can know him. See, some of you got to stop talking about I'm being punished. No, God's trying to teach you him. Tell your neighbor he's getting me to know him. I'm getting to know God better. That's why Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 13 says, you shall fear the Lord your God, serve him, and shall take oath in his name. In other words, we got to learn how to worship the Lord. That's why even like David, like David, we got to be more like David. David, regardless of what he was going through, he would praise God and trust God. He recognized that, watch this now, that even what he was going through, God knew what he was doing. Y'all miss that. Even when you're in the desert, even when you're in the wilderness even when you're going through dry places you got to say my God knows what he's doing the Bible says in Psalms 18 1 and 2 it says I will love you I will love you O Lord my strength the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer my God my strength in whom I will trust my shield the horn of my salvation my stronghold you will let let tell your neighbor you will learn how to worship him in other words when god when you're in a tough season you'll learn how to worship god but when you get into your promise you'll know that god knows how to keep you oh my god so he says listen now so listen you dwell here long enough i've taught you what you need to know to get to your promise. See, some of us need to recognize where we are, it is not for eternity. Mm. What we're going through is not for a lifetime. Mm. (laughs) The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter three, verse one, to everything, look at your neighbor say everything. Everything. Not, Not some things, everything. So you can put the worst thing in your mind that you're going through right now in the wilderness and understand that everything has a season. Tell your neighbor it has a season. To everything there's a season and there it is. A time for every purpose under heaven. So you're not going through something, watch this now, saying that I'm going to be dealing with this for the rest of my life. It, it'll be a shame for a 12th grader to say, I'll be here for the rest of my life. You need to learn what you need to learn so you can move on. So, so, so I need to know, watch this now, that God said it's time to move on. And because God says that, he says you've been here long enough. Now, long enough with God may sometimes be a little longer than we want it to be. Mm. But he knows how long to keep us there so that he can say long enough. Amen. Amen. Come on, give God praise. Now watch this. Here's point two. Here's point two. Because both of these are long points. That's why you only got two today. Point two. You must be willing to get what the Lord has for you. Yeah. Tell your neighbor you must be willing to get what the Lord has for you. Come on, give God praise there. Now, I'm saying that because each tribe got their own section of land. So my section of land may not be your section of land. We may not be part of the same tribe. But the Bible says, listen what God says here, through Moses, or what Moses says after he's reteaching them, he says, turn 
and take your journey and go to the mountains of the Amorites, to all the neighboring places in the plain, in the mountains and in the lowlands, in the, in the south and on the seacoast, to the land of the Canaanites and to Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river of Euphrates. Then watch what God says in verse 8. See, I have set the land before you. Go in and possess the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and, and Jacob, to give them and uh, to, give, to give to them and their descendants after them. And watch what God says. Because what God says here is that you got to be a go-getter. Mm. 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 Yeah. yeah. About 10 of you got that right there. Watch this. Yeah. To ask your neighbor, are you a go-getter? Uh, because what God says is turn and take your journey. What? <laughs> In other words, don't keep going in circles. Make a turn and go straight. Take your journey. In other words, you got to recognize the journey that God is calling you on and calling us on as a people is a journey. Watch this now so that we can get the promise that God has said for our lives. For our life what God has promised us what we need to understand now watch this while we're taking the journey some of us have individual journeys which means that your journey is not my journey and my journey is not your journey but yet we need to understand that God is with us on the journey and then you got to recognize everybody, watch this now, is not willing to take the journey that God is calling them on because the journey is somewhat difficult. Preach up in here, Kearney. If you remember what Jesus said, that when we are on the journey of giving our, when we have given our life to Christ, and we're on the journey now of, of making heaven our home and understanding that it is a promise. But Jesus said in Matthew 7 and 14, he said, because narrow is the gate. And difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few who find it. What, what does that mean? It means that, listen now, it's narrow, it's difficult, it's tough, but you got to understand, you got to have some fortitude. You got to have courage in spite of the pain. You got to have courage in spite of the adversity. It takes some tenacity. You have to have the quality of being very determined and understand that if God has given me this promise for my life, nothing is going to keep me from getting what God has said I can have for my life. Can I say this for a minute? Because the challenge is some of us, we give up because it get tight. Some of us quit because it get a little tough. But you got to recognize even in a promised land, it's your land, but you still got to fight for it when you get there. I wish I had a church right now that understand this because what's the problem with the journey? Well, let your neighbor know the journey is very difficult. It is not what well, you got. You got to make up your mind when you're used for God. Watch this now. When you're used to having stuff, bread drop down and you're used to having water coming from rock. You, you got to now make up your mind. I'm going to take the journey because in the promised land, everything is flowing, which means I got to do something for myself. But not only this, what we got to recognize, although it's there for us to do it for ourselves, it's still God that still supplies everything that we need. So what does God show here? Listen, if you have witnessed me leading you by a pillar of fire by night and a cloud by day, even if the journey is going to be tough, you got to know that I'm leading you. Tell your neighbor he's leading me. See, see, God wants us to be go-getters. Go-getters don't turn their back. Go-getters keep moving forward. I wish I had a church right there. So God says, take your journey. Tell your neighbor, take your journey. Why am I taking my journey? Because my God is with me. 
And I, I have to trust God no matter what I'm dealing with right now. And even though there are giants in the land because they have not gone anywhere in the last 40 years. Matter of fact, they have multiplied in the last 40 years. They've gotten bigger. They've gotten wider. But I still trust God because if God said this is what he wants us to accomplish in life, I have to believe that God goes before me and he prepares the way. We got to know that God is the key engineer and I preach that, Kearney. He is the engineer. He is the one that goes through. He takes down the tree. He takes down the road. He create a road in the desert place. It is our God. Matter of fact, Deuteronomy 9 and 3 says, therefore, understand today. Tell your neighbor today. Today, the Lord your God it is he who goes over before you as a consuming fire. He will destroy them and bring them down before you. So you shall drive them out and destroy them quickly as the Lord has said to you. I got to say this because many of us, watch this now, we do not go into the promise because we are afraid of it. We're afraid of what God has said. God says, listen, if you trust me and start the journey, understand that I'm in front of you creating a way for you to be successful but you got to trust me and then you tell somebody trust God in this why because God says listen I can't get to my notes I got to say this in my spirit because what God says even when you get to your promise you still got to fight for it you got to recognize although I promise it to you you got to take the enemy down trust in me that I've already made a way for you to do it you got to pray that devil off your husband you got to pray that devil off your wife you got to pray that devil off your children you got to pray that devil off your boss you got to fight Tell somebody you got to fight. He never promised you to give you the promise without a fight. That's why he prepared you on this side before you go to this side. That's why he says, turn, turn and take your journey. Because if you turn, that means everything is behind you. Tell your neighbors behind you. So you can't complain about last year's divorce and last year's relationship and last year this and last year that. You got to say everything is before me right now. I don't have time to complain about yesterday. Many of us are complaining about yesterday and everything is before us. You have to take your journey because everything God wants for us is in front of us. Tell your neighbor in front of us. That's why Proverbs 23 and 20, excuse me, Proverbs 3 and 26 says it through the message Bible. I love this. I love the message Bible. It says, because God will be right there with you, he'll keep you. <laughs> Safe and sound. Wait, preach. See, see, somebody hasn't done what God has said because you're scared. But you need to understand that if God said it, he'll be right there with you. Tell your neighbor he'll never leave you nor forsake you. He'll be right there with you. And not only will he be right there with you, but he will keep you safe and sound. What, what does that mean? That means can't nothing come to you unless God allow it to come to you. Come on somebody. And then you must be sound. Tell your neighbor sound. Which means that I am clear thinking. I, I'm not losing my cool because this is bigger than me. And I don't understand why I'm going through this. Yes you do. You got to understand even in your promise you got some enemies. Can I talk to you? Even when you're blessed you got some enemies. Even when you got what you're in the place God wants you to be. There's always somebody that don't like you being what God wants you to be or having what God has blessed you with. You will always have enemies as long as you got a promise. You'll always have enemies as long as you have a promise. But you got to know, Lord, God, God, God put me here. Tell somebody, God put me here. And because my God never fails, I will trust him. That, that's what the word teaches us in 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 56. This is where we got to bless. We got to be people who bless the Lord. It said, blessed be the Lord who has given rest. Tell your neighbor, rest to his people Israel according to all that he promised. There has not failed one word of all his good promise, which he promised 
through his servant Moses. I'm right back there. See, we got to understand that if God said it, there's no way it can fail. Some of y'all got that. See, I understand. I understand some of you saying, but it's been a long time. It doesn't matter. You got to know that you're in a holding pattern. And now God has released the holding pattern so that you can land and do what God is calling you to do now. Oh, y'all, y'all missed that. I said this about four or five years ago and I preached this text for the first time is that sometime God will put you in a holding pattern and the holding pattern keep you circling around your promise but you are circling in a place I remember one time I, was, I flew in I flew in I flew into Atlanta I was flying in Atlanta I don't know I can't remember where I was coming from and, and, and watch this now it was so funny to me and the pilot said because of the traffic and at the Atlanta airport we, we are, we're in a holding pattern, which means that we have to circle Atlanta. He said, we're going back up towards Rome, and we're going to make our approach for landing. But here's the thing. While we were in the holding pattern, I saw my promise. What do you mean? My house is on, in the landing pattern. So while he's circling, I saw my house. The other funny thing was he flew out by Charlie Brown Airport, but from that area, I could see the Atlanta Airport. Then he turned and made his way, watch us now, towards Rome. Then he made the circle and came back, and I could see my house again, which means that we were getting ready to land. Can I talk to somebody now? Because some of you, though you've been in a holding pattern, you got to see it's time for you to land now because God said it's time for you to take the turn and go towards your promise. Watch this because I'm out of time. Which means I'm not stuck here. I was just waiting to land. What do you mean? I'm not stuck in the air. Because verse 8 says, see, I have set the land before you. Don't miss that. God says, see what I have for you. I, I know you're tired of being up here. But there's your house right there. You'll be there soon. And sometimes we got to recognize God will show us the promise so that we will keep the faith and move towards the promise. So let me say this to somebody. God is not teasing you. Because some of us saying, Lord, why would you show me this? And you're holding it back from me. And you also no, I needed you to learn something before I could tell you to take the turn. And some of us, we're anxious. But I, won't, I do not want to get something so soon and because of my immaturity, lose the blessing that God had for me. Come on, come on, come on. So I'm challenging us today as men and women of God Hear what God said. It's time. It's time for us to stop complaining. It's time for us to start trusting God. It's time for us to have faith. Not talk about faith, but have faith. And believe that God is truly able to do what he said he would do with us. See, some of us are still stuck in some things because we're afraid to trust God. We're stuck where we are, like those 40 years prior to this generation, because they were afraid to trust God, and they didn't want to take the journey. But you need to let somebody know, I'm going to take the journey because I want what God has for me. Amen. Amen. Come on, give God praise. Now I want everyone to stand. And I know some of you are moving to get in position to in an area of service. But if you're not moving for those reasons, I'm going to ask you to hold up for a minute.
Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's time. Mm. It's time to let some things go so you can move forward. <laughs> it's time to stop talking about the job that you got fired from and looking backwards, talking about they, um, and saying they did you wrong and recognize God has greater in front of you. It'll be sad to get in your promise, actually dwelling there and still in your mind and in your spirit living on the other side. To the point you cannot even enjoy what God has blessed you with because you're still living on the other side. We got to holistically move forward. That, that's why I, I love this relationship with Jesus Christ because he moves us forward in life. He gives us the ability to, to be strong in the promise. God, I wish I could tell you <laughs> that the promise was easy. Promise is a battlefield, y'all. And sometimes you got to go to war to get peace in your life. Y'all yeah, hear what I'm saying now? And a lot of people don't like to talk about that with the New Testament beliefs. But sometimes you go to battle to get what the Lord said, knowing that Jesus is our peace of mind, our our peace in our spirit but yet still to maintain the promise you got to fight for it if God promised you with a good life you got to fight for it you got to do the things that are conducive to a good life if God promised you a good marriage you got to fight for it I know some believe in one person fighting for it. That person can fight by himself or herself for so long, then that person will grow weary and well-doing. But we got to recognize we need both people fighting for the marriage. Amen. Both people. Both. If it's going to be healthy, got to tell our young people, if you really want a good life later, you got to fight for it. I'm doing everything for you on the wilderness side. But when you get to your promise, you got to know God for yourself. And you got to fight for your promise. I'm, I'm going to do everything I can to get you to college and to help you to graduate. But you got to understand, when you go to work, and when you start working for yourself, you in your promised land, you got to get up on your own. You got to be on time. You got to have some character. You got to fight for it. That's what I see for application in this. Your promise is not always easy. Sometimes you got to fight to take more territory. That promotion is not just going to be dropped in your lap. You got to fight for that territory. And that's what God shows us, new mercies. It's not always easy, and I'm preaching to myself, to be honest. I know I'm where God wants me to be, but sometimes there are some difficult days. But yet I got to trust God like I never trusted him before every day of my life. And if you're in here, if you're in here, what I'm going to do is offer you the Lord Jesus Christ. Not offering you any gimmicks. Not going to offer you a house or cars or super blessings. But what I can do is offer you Jesus who can bless your life. Who can make you better. Who can help you be the person he created you to be. And wherever you are, if you're in here and you don't know the Lord Jesus, your Savior, come and give your life to Jesus. 
Young people don't wait and talk about, I'm going to wait till I get older before I give my life to Jesus. No, you need to give your life to Jesus while you're still young and you'll understand what God is teaching you. God bless 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 you. So no matter who you are and where you are, if the Lord is speaking to your heart, you need to give your life to Jesus today. Then you may, or you may be already saved, but you don't have a steady church home. <laughs> you go from place to place, but yet you keep finding yourself here and God is speaking to your spirit here. And God says, it's time for you to land can't keep flying from one place to another. It's time for you to land. And wherever you are, if God said this is your new church home, this is where you need to be, and you're already saved, you need a home. We will welcome you. We will be glad to welcome you to New Mercies. We'll be glad to be your brothers and sisters in Christ, and we're all growing together. So wherever you are, if either of those two calls are for you, make your way down the aisles now. Don't, don't be afraid. and Don't worry about who's watching you. Come, come. And you can say, well, I'm all the way in the back. That's okay. We'll wait on you. You can say, I'm in the middle of the aisle. That's okay. Just say, excuse me. God bless you. Wherever you are, just come. Wherever you are, just come. Wherever you are, just come. Amen. Can we give God praise? We got some more coming. Come on. Come on. Come on, give God praise for these that are coming. Amen. 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 It's never too late. The door's always open. You can come. It's never too late. You can still come wherever you are. Amen. I believe we've done as the Lord has said. Come on, give God praise for these. Hug your neighbor on your left and right, and you may be seated. I already know them too. I know I dedicated you. You wouldn't remember. <laughs> Tell everybody your name. Jayla Parker. How old are you? 11. She's 11 years old, and she made a decision for herself. And mom and daddy is very proud of you, and we are so happy for you that you're giving your life to Christ today. Amen? Come on, give God praise for little, little Jayla. <laughs> hey, sir, welcome. Tell us your name, where you're from. Tim Vereen. I'm from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Come on, get Vereen. Vereen. Come on, give Brother Vereen a hand. God bless you. Hi. Tell us your name. Where are you from? Jamie Vereen from Murder Beach, South Carolina. Right. Family here. Come on, give God praise for them. Welcome. Hey, tell us your name. Where are you are from? Marlena Williams, Brunswick, Georgia. Brunswick. That's my place. I love Brunswick. St. Simon Jekyll. That area. Amen. We're going to get you to turn to your right and follow our dear sister right here in the name of the Lord. Come on, give God praise for them, our new members and those who are giving their life to Christ. Okay, it's offering time, time to bless God, our tithes, offerings, love, offering, and special offering today. Today we give to St. Jude. Come on, give God praise for that. Come on, come on, come on, New Mercies. Now, we've been preparing you for months, letting you know that this day was coming. This day, the 1st of March, was coming so that you can bring a special offering to St. Jude. Again, if you could see the beautiful work that St. Jude uh, that they do and, and all that God has blessed them to do for families. How a family could go and take their child there that is suffering and have uh, with cancer or some type of cancer. And my last time I was there, I discovered they're now dealing with children who have AIDS. That's, <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine children who have AIDS? They go in there, they get service, 
they, they, they get all their medicine, all their treatment, and they walk out with no bill. Come on now. That, that's a blessing. And so at this time, I'm going to ask Bruce and Bria to come. I represent this for uh, St. Jude. Let's give God praise for them as you're preparing your offering. And they're going to talk to us a little bit. It will be a little bit, Pastor. I now understand why uh, I didn't need an alarm clock this morning. Uh, God knew I would be blessed with the opportunity to commune with New Mercies and to hear a powerful message that probably explains why this young lady is standing here with me, and I'll get to that in just a minute. My name is Bruce Demps. I'm here today representing the National Executive Office of ALSAC and the children of St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital in Memphis, Tennessee. I will say that oftentimes when we think about Memphis and we're in a place like Atlanta, people wonder why. There's so many things that are happening in Atlanta. Why do we need to support something in Memphis? And I never want this point to be missed. Everything that happens in Memphis is shared freely throughout the world, including Atlanta. And families in Atlanta are positively impacted by the support of you, the folks at New Mercies. You need to know that. That's an important point. And we certainly don't want you to uh, consider supporting St. Jude and not do those things that you should do in your local community through this church and as individuals. The reason that I'm here today, there's almost 300 Sunday of Hope services throughout the country. There's only a few that I feel like I need to be on a regular basis, and one is New Mercies. And that is because of the fact that your leader, Pastor Kearney, is doing a great work, not just here, but as a member of the Sun Sunday of Hope Advisory Council, he is providing some of the leadership, ideas, and direction and the innovation that we need to better engage the faith community. And for that, sir, we appreciate you. And you know of those things, and I'm not going to stand before you and plead and beg. You know what the need is. We've gone from a 20% cure rate to an 80% cure rate here. <laughs> but we're only talking about the U.S. I look up at the flags. We're global citizens. And if we look at that percentage, that percentage is around 40%, so you know we got work to do. And, and God didn't place us here, didn't bless you to just be concerned about those things that are near, but those things that are far. I'm not going to preach, but I could. <laughs> I say also the idea of just understanding and hearing Pastor Kearney today talk about a message that he gave and presented to you two plus years ago about your purpose. I mentioned that I'm a part of the national office and we have 38 regional offices. I want to present to some and introduce to others your local development representative, New Mercy's own Bree Thompson. Bree, I had the opportunity to meet Bree uh, about a year ago, and she obviously heard that message. She knew she had a purpose. She stayed true. And you're going to do amazing things, not just here. So, New Mercies, if there's some Sundays when Bree's not here, understand she's somewhere else telling the St. Jude story. And I just want to thank you again for being uh, obedient, and that's the word that I'm careful in saying uh, because I know you trust this man of God. I know you trust him. 
Obedient and considering supporting the work of St. Jude. It means an incredible uh, work will continue. Uh, we're out of Black History Month. It's only March 1st, but I can tell you that we as St. Jude were the force in 1962 to integrate lodging and eating establishments in Memphis, Tennessee. That was before the Civil Rights Movement. I can say to you that uh, Paul Williams, the architect of the stars, designed the original building at St. Jude, an African-American, in 1961. So we've always been about the African-American community. Our founder, Danny Thomas, understood that he was not too much different than us. He's of Lebanese and Syrian descent. If you look at where that is on the map and not call him African, you're being careful. Let's be careful because it's very close. And we have some of those similar traits and characteristics. So I will uh, surrender the balance of my time and allow you to, again, just celebrate how Bree has found her purpose in helping to raise money for the kids of St. Jude, and you should celebrate that. She doesn't want to say anything. I'll say it for Bria. We call her Bree for short, but her name is Bria, and Bria Thompson, I, she's the daughter of Vic and Cheryl, uh, basically watched Bria come into this world. And to watch her grow into the beautiful young lady she is. She graduated from Valdosta State. When she graduated, she took a job with Enterprise. That was her holding pattern because all she kept saying is, I want to work for St. Jude. I want to work for St. Jude. The first time she didn't get the job, but she kept pursuing her promise. And when she and now she's doing a great job. Not only she, well, God held her back really because he wanted her to stay home in Atlanta because the job she was pursuing is in Charlotte but yet God had a purpose for her here in Atlanta. And so we thank God for that. And so we support St. Jude and we support Bria and what she's doing and going throughout this country. Every time I talk to her, where are you now? I'm so-and-so, I have to be on the radio. Okay, tell me what station I try to listen to it on TuneIn. So TuneIn is a wonderful thing because I can't get 102.5 out here on my, in my car, so I use TuneIn. And, um, some of y'all said, I didn't know that we could do that. Yep, it's an app. And, uh, and so I see you. Look, folks, downloading it right now. I'm watching right out there. <laughs> Tune in. And, and so, amen. And they will be here on Thursday um, doing Radio 1 and the, the uh, telethon and things of that nature and giving. But New Mercy, this opportunity now to give. We, we gave a little over 30 that last year. Let's make sure we do even better this year. Amen. All it takes is anywhere from $30 to $50 or better for every adult in here, and we can do it. And uh, I know it's a stretch for some of us, but let's stretch. Let's trust God. Amen? All right. Let's give God praise. Thank you all so much. You can take your seats. I'm going to pray, and then um, there are past the offering baskets. Hold the video to the end of service when people are walking out. I'm going to uh, do a couple announcements so we won't hold you long. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for an opportunity to give. Thank you for touching our hearts to be givers today. And God, we pray now that um, you will bless these tithes, the offerings, love offerings, and God, that you will bless the St. Jude offering, that it will help and touch many families. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, give God praise right there. Now, we have a couple of people here that I want to recognize uh, that are running for local office. Uh, both of these individuals I know uh, extremely well. And um, I guess I need to come down here because of the way I'm making this announcement. And Wesley won't send me a nasty letter or text later saying, dude, you hit them pretty hard. You need to come down out the pulpit when you say stuff like that. Uh, I'm first going to ask uh, Kibo to please stand wherever you are, Kibo Taylor. Come on, give God praise for Kibo. He's running for Gwinnett County Sheriff. This is not his first time at New Mercies. He come to church. He comes to church here. He hadn't joined yet, but he comes. He come getting the word. He come getting the word. And 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 I've I've 
talked to him on several occasions, getting to know his character, how he loves God, he loves his family, he loves this community, he's worked for this community for years. And we know that the sheriff's office is about to be vacant. And this would be a great opportunity to put somebody in there that have the same principles we have and want to make sure that we lock up who we need to lock up. But we also try to do what we can to make them better and not leave them locked up for life. Amen. 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 And we talked about programs and things of that nature that would make a difference because I'm tired of seeing our children go back and forth. If they're in there, let's re rehabilitate them. Let's do what we can to make them, even if they're staying there, is for a short while. While we got them, let's see if we can make a difference and then send them into programs after they leave the jail. Amen? If they do not have to go down the road, because sometimes they have to go down the road. But if they're coming immediately back out, let's do what we can to make a difference in their life. And that's what Kibo has said that he would want to do. So we thank God for him. So remember his name. Talk to him when he goes out to the vestibule and talk about his platform. He has some of his platform here on this. So make sure that you talk to him. Amen. Come on, give God praise for Kibo Taylor. And then I want retired Lieutenant Colonel Jasper Walkins to stand. Where, where is Jasper? Is he here? Okay, must going to be a second service. Okay, my bad. I heard, thought it was going to be at this service. So I won't tell you about him because he's not at first service, but I'll tell him a second. He's a good man. But that's again Lieutenant Jasper Walkins, and he'll be at Watkins, and he'll be at second service. And I'll, I'll talk about him in second service. Um, there, there, there are some great things. Please remember on Wednesday, we will have Bible study. Um, and, and throughout the week, there are some great things. L please pay attention to your app and announcements. Follow your announcements so that you can be a part of the things and do the things that are going on at the church. Uh, there are some great things taking place. Uh, and just keep praying, keep praying, keep praying. Next week, we start a special, a special series. And every, every adult needs you to be here need you to be here and then those that are watching via internet let's be in church if you can't be in church make sure that you tune in i'd rather for you to be here because there's something we want to put in your hand and so let's make sure that we all come to church and hear the new assignment or where god has taken us to become more responsible and do the things which god is calling us to do amen so so please make sure that you're here next week as we start a new series and uh, i think that's everything i need to say can we dismiss now or t-shirts where are they 102. Okay. There are t-shirts available for those of you who still want to buy t-shirts because on Resurrection Sunday, we wear our t-shirts. Amen. We, uh, we don't go get in debt trying to buy new suits, new hair, new nails and all that. Amen. You, jeans or black pants and leather shoes, tennis shoes and, and your t-shirt. Okay, one more announcement. That you could have used this. I ain't sick. <laughs> well, let me say this. I'm gonna go outside, shake hands. So you do this. All right, praise the Lord, everybody. He's gonna get a benediction. Hallelujah. Yes, we have just one more announcement. On March 14th at 7:30 p.m. The Singles Ministry will be hosting an event for everyone. Let me say it again. It is for everyone. Uh, we will be going to the Atlanta Hawks game versus the Cleveland Cavaliers. If you're interested, you may sign up through the New Mercies website or email Jesse Kearney the fourth at jkearney4 at newmercycc.org. Again, that's on March 14th, 730, and it's open to everyone, but it's being sponsored by the Singles Ministry. Amen. Stand to your feet, please, New Mercy. Amen. The media ministry will be playing a video as you're exiting. Don't forget there's prayer available. Uh, for those who desire prayer, you can come to the altar and there's someone who will pray for you. Amen. Amen. Go be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> As a mother, Amir means the world to me. He, along with the other children, are my pride and joy. I love him so much.
Children cry, babies cry, but there's just a certain type of cry that a baby has and know that there's something else that's wrong, not just a normal cry. Our baby didn't want to walk anymore. Our baby no longer really wanted to eat and he just cried nonstop. I took Amir to the doctor. They would do tests and come back and give me things like fever, stomach illness, junior arthritis, and I continued to go for about seven or eight weeks. Eventually, they wanted us to go to the hospital, and when we went to the hospital is when we were told Amir has cancer. We were told that we had 24 hours to pack our things and we would be flown to St. Jude. We get to the hospital and within 24 to 48 hours, he's in surgery. After the surgery, we had a long discussion with the doctor. She pulled us in a room and she sat right in front of me face to face. She looked me in my eye and she told me that your son has acute lymphoblastic leukemia. We were in shock for a while. But when I left the first meeting with the doctors, I felt relief. It felt like I had hope, and he has a good fighting chance of making it. You ready? At St. Jude, he received multiple treatments. The cancer had spread through his spine, so he gets chemotherapy not only in his chest, but also in his spinal fluid. He also gets bone marrow tests. He gets MRIs. They do genetic testing, dental exams as well. Amir to assessment triage. Amir to assessment triage, please. Throughout the course of treatment, Amir's had good days and bad, but he's a survivor. He's resilient. St. Jude means the world to Amir. That is his happy place. The treatment we received is way more than what we could expect and ask for and way more than we could afford. We never received a bill from St. Jude, never ever. Not having to focus on the financial part allowed me and his father to focus more on the compassion part. It's heartbreaking to watch my baby Amir go through things like this, but I know the cure rates for ALL have gone from 4% to 94%. So we're trying to embrace life and every day that we have, enjoy it and remember to laugh and love because we don't know what tomorrow brings. Cancer is horrible, but St. Jude is the best chance for our children to survive.
Unstoppable. Shake somebody, say it's unstoppable, baby. You guys remember this? Turn it around. Open the wind. We, I'm sorry, windows of heaven. And pour out a blessing. Overflow. Turn it around. That was nice, that little flip there. <laughs> Open the wind, we, sorry, man. <laughs> Windows of heaven. <laughs> and pour out a blessing. <laughs> we cannot. <laughs> and then assume that I can hit this note.
my whole life around and I thank you thank you Lord you turn on
Do you realize that you're alive right now at the greatest time in history? Come on, you realize. Look somebody in the eye, so do you know? You're alive at the greatest time in history. We can change the world. Come on. Do you realize? This is the greatest time to be alive, man. The disciples only wish they had the internet and jets and cell phones and the ability to take the gospel all over the world. Somebody scream!
Zephaniah 3.17 says, The Lord is in your midst. He's mighty to save, mighty to deliver. He will quiet you with his love. And he will rejoice over you with singing. God has a voice and he sings. Could you lift a hand or two? Say, Lord, sing over me tonight. Speak to my heart. Holy Spirit, quiet us. Oh, God. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. He hears us when we call and he calls back. I'm not a man. I cannot lie. I know the plan. For your life, I'm asking you to dream again, believe again, and take the limits off of me. No, I'm not. Can I lie? I know the plans I have for you. The my design. So I'm asking you just to hope again and trust again and take the limits off. I hear the Lord say, take the limits off. Take the limits off. Release me to accomplish what I promised you. Oh, take the limits off of me. Take the limits off. Release me. See you in Greece. See you in Greece. 